Have you ever wondered what it's like to live inside of a bar? Well, let's go find out. This bar was built in 1908 and has been since converted into a single family house. Now, the amazing couple who invited me out here reached out to me on r slash St. Louis on Reddit. Come on up to the patio and this has all been added on in more recent years. There's this giant pergola that soars above us, but we can still see the original cast iron storefront that would have been here. And this actually would have not been the entrance to the bar. That would have been on the side of the house. Let's take a moment to just really see these details. There are these rosettes, and then there are even these cast iron rods that are disguised as rosettes atop this column underneath the turret. Other areas of interest include the Flemish style parapet wall with five finials along the roof line and a conical turret with slate roof and siding. All right, let's go see what's inside. We've just walked inside and immediately we noticed just how large the space is. So there are 12 foot ceilings throughout. Now to either side of me and we'll take a closer look at these. These are the original windows from when this was a bar. So you can imagine that the original front door would have been right here. You would have opened this up and walked into the space. So follow me on over here and there is a threshold and a step up. This takes us to the original occupant stairs. So they would have entered from the door on the side over here and gone up and then they could have opened this door to access their bar. So this most likely would have been the shopkeeps who lived directly above this. As we move this way, we now come to what is kind of a replication of the original bar. So this was added probably within the last 30 years or so. Now the owners have done something really special. They've brought in a period cash register. As we walk through this house, there are some really interesting structural details to notice. So these poles run all the way through the house and we can actually see on the far side that it's been embedded into the wall, but it is still supporting this beam directly above here. So let's look up, and this is actually the original tin ceiling, and we can just really see how intricate it all is. Moving further into this space, we now come to what is set up as the living room, and the first thing I really want to point out is the chandelier. So this was actually rescued from a home in the Central West End and brought into this space, and we can see that there was a space for the hardware to be hooked up for the chandelier up here on the ceiling. So we can imagine that there was probably always something possibly similar to this hanging in this space. Now, the living room is set up really interestingly. There's this built-in that's a partition shelf, and it really separates off this space from the space that we just saw. So let's start exploring the rest of the house. Now, off to the side of the bar over here is a full bathroom, so let's just take a peek inside of here. Now we can get to the back side of the house, and this is where things start to get really new before they get really old again. So come on through here and we are now passing into the kitchen. This brings us into the kitchen. There is this giant island that really kind of helps to delineate the space in this room. There are these dark cabinets that match all of the wood trim that we've been seeing on all of the windows and doors so far, and granite countertops. And this brick backsplash is actually the same brick that we see around the rest of the room. It has just been painted to kind of give it an accent. And I think that that is a great way to really update the space while still maintaining its original charm and look. So once again, we come to another one of these amazing structural columns that's been preserved here. And as we turn around, there's actually a fireplace in this room, and this would not have been original to the house. Of course, it's in more of a modern style, but one of the big indicators that shows us that there was never a fireplace here is we can look up at the ceiling and we can see that the tin has been cut and replaced. So this tells us that at one point, there would have been an additional wall that cut out this space. 
Now on the outside of the house is a window that goes to nowhere and it's very small. So it tells us that this was probably a bathroom at one point. Now we've seen the entire first floor. Let's go ahead and move over here. This is going to take us to what is the back staircase? And actually, I want to show you all something before we go upstairs. Come on through here and just look up. There is a tin ceiling and it has patina on it. So this has not been painted, so we can really see how it would have looked um, kind of in a raw state. Continuing on, this door is going to take us outside. So let's go see what the patio looks like. Walking outside, we come to this little deck area. And as we pass down, this is all covered by the way, there's a deck that comes off of the home office. And we'll see that whenever we go upstairs. But there are these beautiful pavers. There's a wonderful garden with all these planter boxes. There's a cinder block wall and it actually has an urn on top of it. And there's an identical one over here on this side as well to just kind of frame out the space. And then behind us is actually a pretty good size bit of yard here. So of course there's covered parking and then there's also grass. So that's really nice to just have a little flat area for pets and kids, whatnot. There is an entrance to the basement down over here. Now, if we come over here, we can actually see that some of these bricks are stamped with the years that they were replaced. And that's just really interesting. Off to the side is a cast iron downspout. Now this is still functional. It brings the water down and out through the yard. And we can actually see upstairs where the gutter was moved. And I'll show you that later when we're up there. Now we've seen the backyard. Let's go check out what's upstairs. So let's go on up. Coming up the stairs, of course, there's all this beautiful woodwork and this is all original to the house. Now we saw something similar to this in the last house that we viewed. The banister is in sections. So this indicates that it was probably built here on site by skilled craftsmen who would put blocks and then sand it down as they went along here. So building the staircase could have taken as long as a week or possibly longer. So let's continue going up now. As we arrive at the top of the steps, there's a hallway that takes us down towards the bedrooms. But first, let's walk forward. And this takes us into the bathroom. Now, originally, this would have been the kitchen. So let's just take a moment to look around this space. There's beadboard on the back wall. There is a pedestal sink and a clawfoot tub, as well as a full shower. Moving on from the bathroom, we're going to go down this hall and this is kind of T-shaped here. So it's gonna shoot off this way and this way. Now, the first place we're going to go to is the home office. So come on in here. We can see that the tin ceiling up above has been replaced in more recent years. So it's not original to the house, but it does pay homage to what could have been here originally. Now, something to really point out is it still has the original hardware. So let's take a closer look at this. And we're actually going to see the same hardware on all of the doors on the second floor. Now, passing over to this side of the room, there is another piece of really intricate hardware below the transom and above the door. Let's take the French door out to the patio. Now, of course, this French door is newer. Out here on the deck, we can get beautiful views of the Tower Grove Park tree line. So all of the trees that you see off in the distance are part of St. Louis's second largest park, which is just about three blocks that way. So that really puts us in walking distance to some of the best amenities that the city has to offer as far as public lands go. Now crossing over this way, we can see where this would have been an old smoker's patio. So if we look on the brick over here, we can see where the lead paint and the cast iron has oxidized and imprinted on the brick staining it. And this gives us a perfect outline of the post that was here. Now, the gutter that I mentioned down on the first floor on the backyard, we can see that it would have originally continued here because once again, it has imprinted on the brick and the new gutter has been run off to this side. Coming back inside the house, we're now just going to shut this door and we will start exploring the rest of the home. So we're going to walk back out into this hallway and we'll make a quick turn off to this side to see the first guest bedroom. So come on through here. And one of the first things that really catches our eye is the trefoil arch that's right above us. And we'll see this a couple more times as we go through the house. So let's just take a moment to see this.
Now passing out of this bedroom and adjoined to this bedroom is another bedroom. And there's a door that takes us there. Of course, it has the original hardware, the same Baroque style hardware that we've been seeing throughout the rest of the house. And there's another trefoil arch that's directly above us. So come on through here. Now we can see that it has the original windows with the original window trim. And as we rotate around the space, we can see that most of the baseboards are original, though they have been kind of patched and repaired in a few places but they've been mashed up pretty well. And then there's a mural on this wall that was done by previous owners. Now, passing out of this bedroom, we're now going to go down this long hall, and this is going to take us to the master suite. So, of course, the lights above us are new, and there are other doors that take us to the linen closets. Off to this side is that first staircase that we saw whenever we entered the house. So we can go ahead and peek down here. And of course, this takes us down to the living room and would have originally been the occupant's entrance that could just take them directly up to their apartment. Now, passing back through here, we come to these double French doors and this takes us into the foyer for the master bedroom. So there is, of course, a mirrored closet on this side. There's a bathroom right behind me, and we'll look at this first. So come on in here. We can see that it has this beautiful updated shower with custom trim around it. There's also this giant jacuzzi tub. And if we turn around to this side, there is a double vanity under a large mirror, and of course, Edison bulbs above. Coming out of the bathroom, we're now going to pass through this box archway, and this takes us to the sitting room for the master. Some really interesting things. Of course, there's a newer updated fireplace, but the original cast iron inset is laying right here and ready to be reattached. Over here is just a really special spot. So their dog loves to lay up here inside of the turret. And this is what we saw on the outside of the house, the round room that's floating up in the corner. Now coming off the sitting room, there are these giant pocket doors and these are bird's eye maple. And we last saw this in the Magic Chef Mansion. So we can go ahead and just tuck these away and come on in and let's see the master bedroom. Now, of course, this bedroom has been fully updated. It has a modern ceiling fan. It has these more modern built-in cabinets over here for storing clothes. So it's kind of like a wardrobe in a sense. Now, over here is another fireplace. This matches the one that we just saw in the sitting room. However, it does not have its original cast iron inset. And to pay homage once again to some of the things that we've been seeing, there are some period pieces like this old boudoir here that's set up with makeup. Now that we've seen the entire second floor, let's go look at the basement because we think it might have been a speakeasy back in Prohibition days. Let's go find out. As we come downstairs, the first thing that we really see is the cellar. So come on in here and there are barrel vaulted ceilings and we are actually now underneath the patio that's out front. So we're not even underneath the house here. We can imagine that when this was a bar, this would have been set up with beer kegs and wine bottles. And there's actually a matching one on the other side that goes out further towards the street underneath the patio. So as we come out of here, we're actually just going to skip ahead and I want to show you guys something really cool. Further into the basement, we find these really decorative and ornate cast iron columns that encase the support. So this is just not something that you would see in a basement if it was just for support, which makes us think that this could have been a speakeasy back in the day um, during the Prohibition days. So we can just really see these flares. And another really interesting detail is there's this door. Now the bricks on the other side of the store are stamped with the years 1921 and 1924, which of course were dates leading up to the Prohibition. Just another really interesting thing to kind of ponder about. Now that we've seen the entire house, let's go meet the owners and talk to them about their experience with this house. Carrie and Steve, thank you so much for opening your doors and for allowing us to film here. Your house is just amazing. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming. Yes. Yeah. So what drew you to this house originally? So I had actually been stocking it on Zillow for quite some time. I really, we were in the market for a house in the Tower Grove South area. It's our favorite part of the city. And I just loved the architecture within the house and I loved the area. 
So I just kept watching it, kept watching it, and finally it was a little bit within our price point. So um, I was so excited that before we um, toured the house with our realtor, we walked around the block in the area and Steve, he was like, uh-uh, I, I don't want it, it's not worth it. Um, but I was like, let's, let's just look inside, let's look inside. Um, and then when we did go inside, he fell in love and we just knew it was um, the home for us. Yeah, I was skeptical, but like the second I walked in and like looked around, I'm like, yep. Well, that was easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you have improv practices and all this empty space that's in the front. Yeah, so in the uh, in the front room, like there's there's a lot of uh, space for uh, activities, and uh, my improv team uh, as we've started to practice there, so it's been fun. And if you're here in St. Louis, make sure to check out Steve's improv group. And Steve, do you want to tell everyone about that? Yeah, sure. Uh, it's a great time. Uh, the improv shop is where we perform, uh, and my team is Mr. Mayor. So come find us. That's amazing. And also in that same space, you mentioned that the paintings you have on display have a special significance to you. Yes, yeah, so um, I really like old things. And I think that's another reason why I like this house so much. And my grandmother actually, she did so many paintings in her years, but she never got them framed. She just kept them underneath her bed. Um, and so me and my family, we got all her paintings out and we framed them all on our own. Um, and that big wall that is across from the mirror in the main room has all of her paintings on it displayed. So that's really special for me. There are probably some really interesting stories that you've heard from neighbors or other people in the area about your house and the bar that it used to be. Yeah, uh, I was talking to a, a neighbor a couple of houses down who uh, he recalled, he had lived here since he was a child and he remembered like uh, just being sent to get like chips or uh, beer from the bar uh, while it was functioning. It's just really interesting to think that it was really the little corner store here and that people utilized it and came together here. And everyone watching at home, I really hope that you enjoyed this tour. It was really interesting to see how this bar has been converted into a single family residence and all of the original features that have been maintained and cared for over the years. Make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time on This House.